Welcome to the Strategic Project Leader, where we help you leverage strategic project management so you can achieve your goals. Now, here's your host, Ola Alibi. Good morning and welcome to another fantastic episode on the Strategic Project Leader podcast. I'm super excited because on Saturdays, I get to spend my time with my community. Today is a great one because we're going to be diving into the subject of the project environment office. But as you know, on the Strategic Project Leader, we're all about helping business leaders, aspiring project managers, and even executives level up in leverage strategic project management to help drive strategic goals and objectives. And the beauty about this is you can apply this at work as well as in your personal life, to create the life you've always craved. I am your host, Fola F. Allaby. I am an authority in project management. I have done this for over two decades. My passion is all about helping leaders and actually building the next generation of project leaders as well to help drive results. On the episode today, we're going to be talking about the strategic project management office. So we're going to be running through how to set that up and how to ensure that you can leverage the project management discipline to create value. But I want to know exactly where you're joining us from. Let me know in the comments. I can see people already joining in already. I am introducing a great leader who has got a wealth of experience. The beauty about this is he doesn't just run projects, but he has led transformations. I love the fact that he calls himself a serial entrepreneur because as you know, a good project leader is one who is actually a great entrepreneur, who can drive results, who can turn ideas into tangible outcomes. He's, in, he's, he's passionate about the project management office. He's the chairman and key contributor to the PMO guidebook. It's a piece where they are driving the PMO as a center of excellence globally. And we're going to dive into that as well. But as, apart from that, he was awarded the most influential CEO in 20, 2018 by the CV Magazine and the UK for outstanding contributions in learning and development. Listen, the list goes on, but I don't want to talk too much because you're going to get to understand what makes this leader exceptional. He's working with the, you know, AI. They're going to be stuff that's going to be coming out pretty soon. His work is, you know, gone global as well and even been translated, you know, across several languages. Can you please join me as I bring on stage Mr. Abdullah? Mr. Abdullah, how are you this morning? Very good morning, Fuller. Hello, hello, world. How are you doing? This is fantastic. Fantastic. How is was the weather like in England? Because Mr. Dubla is actually joining us all the way from London, England. Oh, home for me as well. What's it like today? It's a beautiful weather, I must say. Not raining, but a bit windy and cloudy. I really enjoy this weather. Perfect. Fantastic. I know it's definitely great. Over here in Canada, it's nice and the sun is actually out, which is great, you know. When we get to experience that, we cannot complain because when the snow starts, oh my goodness, you don't want to know. We want to say thank you for everyone actually joining us. We have got Lisa from Toronto. We've got people from Jordan, from the UAE, from Malaysia, from Cameroon, from, oh, Slovenia, from all over the world. So let's get into the details because we know time is of the essence. When we think about the PMO and project management, first off, what brought you into the world of project management? Ah, that's a that's a fair, you know, very very good question actually. You know, I, I was a sales guy, uh, especially in the tech world. Uh, so I was uh, selling softwares in different banks and different institutions, and um, and and once in one of my career, so one of the largest big banking deal I have closed. Right? It's a big one, big big, like twelve hundred branches bank. So uh, when, and that was my account to actually, you know, to manage. So when I started managing it, oh my God, as a, as a country manager, my role was to not just, you know, you know closing the deal, but like managing the, managing the whole account, you know, you know, bringing the, you know, the payments, ensuring the deliveries are there uh, to the client side, managing all the stakeholders, all the critical and difficult stakeholders. Then I did as, oh my God, problem good in project management. Why not I also try? uh something in project management and, and try to add some value then i realized oh my god once once i did my pmp like you know uh, 11 years back 
I saw, oh my God, there's a big space where I can actually really contribute or probably I can come up with a better solution. And then, then you know, uh, I know my journey started uh, big time, um, uh, directly managing, developing project management related solutions. So one of the e-learning product we have, which is the exam simulation platform, which we built like, you know, uh, 10 years back, uh, which is currently available in several languages where people are learning project management through different languages, through cloud platforms. So once uh, this project management, uh, you know, a domain we have, you know, uh, discovered, then we realize, oh my God, the next step from project management is PMO. And that's where, you know, the, the, the beautiful journey, in the space of PMO started like, uh, you know, seven years back. Fantastic. So when we think about project management, we know that projects are all about helping turn ideas into tangible outcomes. Organizations leverage projects, you know, across IT, construction, the nuclear pharmaceuticals. We are always there to help turn strategy into something tangible. And so when you think about the project management office, which is called the PMO, it's more about the governance, the the role that sits across the different disciplines to ensure that these projects are definitely successful. So when um, Ms. Abdullah talks about the PM and his journey, is the fact that we're going to be diving into what does that governance world look like? We want to focus on one that's definitely strategic because there are different tiers and levels where you have just the reporting function of a project management office or you have one that sits that gives governance, training, and support. And we're privileged because Mr. Abdullah has actually set up an organization that drives value and sets up project management office. So let's get into that. When we think about a project management office, what are the things that are needed you know, to set up one that's definitely strategic? <laughs> Uh, uh, strategic, I would rather say, you know, uh, we, are, we are planning to and, you know, working towards, you know, creating smart, uh, smart, uh, you know, PMOs. Yeah, so uh, probably, you know, there was a study where it, it was figured out on the PMOs, uh, what are the level of maturity of the PMOs? And it was seen that uh, there are five levels of maturity in general, level one to level five. Level one means actually, uh, you know, organizations, they have a project management office but they're not active they don't have any policy procedures nothing and level five means up you know you know you know uh, uh, optimized level so according to another study you know a study it found that about 88 percent pmos is still operating in majority level one so we are working towards to improve these 88 percent who are actually in the level one maturity level they want to improve from level you know level one to level two three and four right so um, I think it's very important for the medium size and large size organization who are initiating the you know the PMO uh, journey is very very important that you know I always call it if it's a PMO you are setting up a new PMO uh, it's, it's more like your uh, you know uh, it's it's like a new country so when you when you you know uh, uh, you know uh, you are in a new country you need to set up your own constitutions. So for, for new PMOs, it's very, very important that you set up your policy. And we named it, we named it like 2PG, like policy, procedure, and governance. Policy, procedure, and governance, we call it 2PG. So that means it's very important that the new, new country, the new department has a policy in place, policy, procedure, and governance. And there is a journey, it's not a, you know, easy to actually just set up this policy, procedure, and governance. It goes through a lot of you know, interaction with the stakeholders, management, find their needs i call it pain formula find the pains that the stakeholders and the management has bring it out and set up your policy procedure and governance align with the strategy of the management and the vision then gradually you move towards a very strategic as well as you know a, you know a kind of like PMO which serves your purpose i love that so much because you hit a very very important point where you spoke about the pain points in every situation even if you're not a PM, you're all about delivering value, solving a problem. That's why we talk about being like an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur comes in and says, where is there a gap in the market and how can I be the one to become the solution? So as a project professional, when you show up on a daily basis, it's about where exactly is there a gap? Where what are the pain points? How can we identify that so that I can become the solution that leads that transformation. And so it's critical that when you think about the next move, we spoke about PMs who want to go into the project management office and lead that. You need to start thinking today within my processes, 
where are their pain points? Are you noticing a gap? Maybe the way you report, the way, you know, the team members actually put together the, the detailed requirements, whatever that is, is, is there a gap in there? But always thinking strategic. I think that's really key here because the alignment to organization strategic goals and objectives is what sets the level ones apart, especially from the ones operating at the very, very level five level, because beyond just pushing paperwork and creating reports and, you know, all this power BIs and stuff, it's about how can you ensure that the organization delivers to its strategic goals and objectives. So when you spoke about the first step, I love the vision because I, I share the value framework as well. I say V is about understanding what the vision is of the organization and then using that to create the vision for your PMO. When that vision is clear, you know there are pain points. Probably you know that products are being delivered not on time, or you know PMs realize that there is a gap around even how to train, you know, an educational knowledge gap that actually exists. And then you go off and say, "I believe a PMO is needed." How can a project manager or maybe a, just a new PMO leader go forth and say, "Okay, what's the next step? How do I engage senior leaders so that we can get this idea to become a reality?" Very, very, very uh, good question, uh, Fola. So one of the inspiration why we have set up this PMO Global Institute and all this structure is, you know, we did a research and figured out, uh, you know, PMI has like 1.2 million, 1.3 million uh, PMP certified professional. Uh, Prince2 has another 1 million plus, right? So that means we are talking about um, a, a certified group who are certified project management professionals, about 2.5 million plus minus. And it's considered that the certified professionals, certified project managers, only probably two to three percent of the whole, you know, project management community. Think about it. Only two to three percent. That means now, if you consider as a project manager, what is the next level they're moving forward? Right. Most of the cases, after spending 10, 15 years as a project manager, you're moving towards as that department head. You are moving towards as the you know the senior manager. You are moving towards managing multiple projects, right? Then when they're becoming you know head of the PMO or head of the project management office or head of the department, then the struggle starts because we know that globally about seventy five percent projects somehow somehow PMOs somehow actually fail or get shut down within three years time. Yeah. This is really alarming. This is really alarming. You know our objective is you know how we can improve this situation. That's why. Uh, we, we we tried to come up with an integrated solution. For example, you know, we have the we came up with the CPPMO certification framework, where we can educate people how you can from a step by step process how you can set up a you know entire PMO. But yeah. it requires some kind of structured learning. It's not like that. You know, you are a good project manager. Uh, you just become a great PMO. No, it's not. For PMO, to set up a PMO and manage a PMO, we really need to know the structure process, how really that can be done. So we have a framework called CB PMO framework, which is like four, four layers, like foundation layer, executive layer, you know, uh, you know, supporting layer, and uh, executive sponsorship layer, where we have brought in emotional intelligence in the executive sponsor level. That means, um, you know, your top management, uh, you know, must know what is their job, you know, when they are the, you know, the sponsor in a PMO, right? So then also we tried to come up with, you know, um, we also found that, oh my God, if we, if we, you know, uh, it's good that we are actually, you know, uh, we'll certify people, we'll educate people how to, you know, develop the PMO, but how many PMO trainers do you have? Yeah. So again, our another initiative is to actually, you know, uh, you know, develop a lot of PMO trainers, qualified trainers. And also for the PMO trainers, you know, we are giving all the logistics and everything. And also we have a PMO, AI-based PMO system. So we are trying to help the whole world uh, with the integrated solutions that we have um, and help them improve the current situation and move towards to the level two and level three, right? So this is how, how uh, we are trying actually, you know, to make them more strategic and uh, learn the PMO and execute and manage the PMO better way. 
It's interesting to know that for people who are actually just joining us, we're talking about the project management office, the governance, the support team, the strategic force that helps drive the project management discipline. So we have uh, Mr. Abdullah, who's the CEO. He's actually driving a lot of change. I was just going through some of your manuals in the, a couple of days ago to see the great work that they're actually putting out there when it comes to driving excellence in the project management office. And I wanted to talk about this pretty quickly is a lot of project managers think about what next. The PMO Global Institute, which is the CEO, offer driving a change as to how they can train and, and bring together a consultant who can help make this happen. Because you think about to be my next career what do you say you know do i just go in and become a program manager do i go in you know into the pmo space or do i go in and you know look for another career altogether because the goal here is to help project professionals chat apart to c-suite so what we've highlighted now is the fact that there's specific tools there's specific skills that you need to be able to understand to be a better pmo leader what would you say those skills are uh, uh, PMO leaders is, is very challenging. To become a successful PMO leader is very, very challenging because you need to be, you know, have this emotional intelligence. You also need to know, you know, uh, what is your strategic goal and align your PMO and help your PMO managers and the PMO heads and the PMO team to align and connect with the management and the PMO, right? So PMO leaders, actually, we say that it's very important that as a PMO leader, we know our responsibility or at least we are aware about our responsibility. Probably you know that in one of the statistics where PMI said uh, about 68% uh, you know, stakeholders within the organization, they are not aware about the importance of project management. Yeah, so that means the, the top management, they really need to be, you know, uh, uh, you know be aware, uh, they know uh, how that needs to be done and how uh, that needs to be you know, connected with the, with, the, with the team that they have and deliver accordingly and work closely with the PMO team. It's not like they're two different team or you know, uh, they're just spending money. We came up with a concept called, you know, traditionally it's considered that PMO is a cost center. That, you know, PMO department, they are taking budgets, they're spending money, but no, PMO could be your profit center. I think that message needs to be, trans, uh, you know, transferred, uh, you know, across the organization, across the world, that PMO could be your profit center. That means uh, how is possible? Definitely is possible because if PMO can bring deliver, uh, you know, the strategic projects, if they can deliver, you know, uh, you know, project has a lot of, you know, visible, invisible, and long term, uh, you know, uh, values. So there is a formula where you can actually, you know, uh, bring this up and uh, really show the management that PMO could be your profit center. And if you can establish this theory, PMO could be your profit center. You will see that you will get the attention of the top management. No, if I invest more in PMO, you know, I will get more profit in the organizations and I can make more investment and support, right? Yeah. Probably. Yeah, I think that's really important because the framing of this actual functional discipline is one that's going to set you apart even to become a successful leader. The project environment office over the last decade, because I have worked with the PMO for over 10 years, and I found that, as you said, after a couple of years, you find that that a lot of PMOs are actually being disbanded because they seem just like another cost center. So yeah. how you definitely strategically set up that project office, that discipline, where you drive excellence in project management is absolutely critical because senior leadership and C-suite have to see the value that you bring to the table. You need to be able to numerically, economic viability here is like, how exactly have you been able to add value, for instance? Can you quantify projects that are actually now delivered maybe on time and on budget. You need to be able to quantify the experience that your project managers are beginning to, to have when executing on projects. How are you able to manage the risk across the portfolio? How are you able to you know, look at the entire strategy even of the organization and say, we probably may have maybe 20 projects in our, in our, in our organization and we probably only need maybe 15. How can you start and stop a project seamlessly so that it doesn't actually affect the bottom line. So I love that, uh, Mr. Abdullah, the fact that we need to frame and ensure that the project management office, or more or less the project management center of excellence, is one that is seen as a value driver. Absolutely. So over the years from your experience, so how can that be positioned? So for someone who's saying, I want to set up this project management office, and now I have a vision, I'm trying to put together a team. What are those key things or those key indicators 
that can be set up right from the beginning that could ensure that we connect with C-suite and they understand the value that the PMO brings to the table? That's a brilliant question, Fola. Uh, you know, uh, uh, the way we recommend to set up a PMO is like, just, just set up a kind of like agile PMO and, you know, set up your PMO with agile mindset. What, what do we mean by that agile mindset? Most of the cases we have seen, people are actually, you know, um, uh, PMOs are, you know, failing because they set up a long plan or probably they set up a, they have a plan, but they cannot bring values to the top management. Top mm -hmm. management in short period of time, like three to six months or within a year, they don't see any value, right? So they stop sponsoring uh, the PMO organization, right? So, so what we suggest, set up your PMO roadmap. Mm. And this roadmap could be three months to three years to six years, right? You know, at least at least set up a you know set set up a roadmap with three months and and with the with a uh, roadmap with a with a you know uh, uh, with some kind of strategy that every three months you deliver something to your top, top management like like the agile philosophy right right it's small increment so that's why I said within three months do your gap analysis you know uh, see what is your organization is doing what are the different different departments are doing capture those. And you know, develop your two PG. That means develop your organizational, you know, policy, procedure, and governance. Make a book. I always suggest this to all of my, you know, uh, PMO friends. Make a book after three months. Print it out. Color printed. Well one. Yeah. Take it to your management. Say, boss. Now I have the policy for my department. Mm. And and whenever your top management sees, oh my God, I have something physical, and I have something. You know, my my department is is policy is there. Something is happening. And next three months, next, you know, in your roadmap, next three to six months, develop your capacity. I mean, within the organizations, make people train on the project management, the policies that you have developed. Again, when in next three to six months, you are actually making people aware about the importance of project management, including your top management, the sponsoring organization. Then again, top management is happy. People are talking in the same language. Yeah. Organization is getting values. Then, then go for, then actually, you know, you are in a position to negotiate, to bring more investment from the top management, bring more resources in the department and gradually, you know, add up more, uh, one or more, you know, uh, you know, the projects, show the value, short term, short term, you know, gains. I always say, if you have a, you know, PMO within one year target to actually, you know, generate your, you know, PMO or portfolio, you know, status report through the software. Yeah, that means. You know, let's say you have like 30, 30 projects going on and uh, you are managing just one project under PMO, right? But in, and, and you know, different uh, projects you are managing, just giving support and one project you are directly managing. What you do after three months managing the projects, generate the, you know, the portfolio reports, take it to your top management, just send it to your top management and let top management see that, you know, one project I'm getting the real time report of my portfolio another 20 you know uh, 20 odd projects I'm, I'm actually not getting the real time reports right so this is how this is what we call actually you know smart pmo you know through you know kind of adapting some agile philosophy that small incremental value driven delivery to your top management and that builds the trust and the, and, and 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 the commitment from the top management and the pmo team and that helps survive in long I know, and that's that's really important. Again, for those who are just joining us, we've been talking about creating a strategic project management office, or people call that creating a team that kind of drives excellence in project management. We've run through the vision. We've actually spoken about how you position this to ensure that it becomes a value driver and helps drive strategy for your organization. And I love the fact that Mr. Abdullah just spoke about creating a roadmap with everything making the business understand where we're going. What's the direction, right? You were currently in a, in a particular place, what's our current states? You need to map out what the future state is gonna look like. What difference is this discipline gonna to bring to your organization? Why should people be excited about this particular change? You know, why should we, you know, pay you a couple of hundred thousand, you know, dollars to come in and, you know, start hiring a team of people. So ensuring that you can pictorially as well show roadmap of where you're going it helps the business it helps even your team understand that so when we take the the roadmap we've created some form of report and actual numbers to show this is exactly where we've been before the current state mm -hmm. now maybe in the next in the next three months because of the work we've put in we can show you that we can create this increase 
what else can PMOs help to gain more traction? What can they do to help, you know, because our goal is to help them drive and get a role right at the table at C-suite. We want the PMO function or the project's center of excellence to sit right reporting to the CEO. What do they need to do as well in addition to show the value and the strategic level that they are needed to be at? Yeah, this is what I said. You know, it's very important that after talking with the top management, understand the understand their pains, understand the you know the existing you know the project management functions the, uh, within the organizations that we have. Capture all these functions, create the roadmap, right? And also, it's very important that you know I emphasize on this that it's very important that you know we have a big wish list. Top management want you to do this, 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 ten items, right? Uh, then it's very important that you do a quick test. Uh, you know, maturity assessment test of your organization. Where does your maturity, you know, stays at this moment? If if your organization is is in maturity level one, then it's, it's, it's not wise to actually target and 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 bring a lot of you know responsibility within the PMO because organization is not yet ready, right? Yeah. That's what is then where a lot of PMOs fail because they overcommit. They think they can do a lot of things, but it's not the reality. We need to actually you know really you know. Uh, go back into the bottom and see where do we stand now. Then I would rather say that you know set up your you know PMOs gradually. If you're in in, in level one, I don't think you're you know positioned to actually you know really directly manage projects. So probably you need to set up the policy procedure first. You know probably be on a supportive role for a long term. We don't know the term. So once things improve, then probably you know you you go for you know um, bring more responsibility within the PMO. And 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 uh, plan the roadmap accordingly. So it's it's, it's not easy just you know, directly go and solve the problem. So we really need to see the reality, which is available in the ground. Yeah, that's great. So overall, when we think about it, what would you then say are the overall steps? So if you want to go through like a roadmap, what would you say are the probably like the five key steps that are needed to set up this the, the strategic PMO? Yeah, so it's very important that uh, you know it depends on the on the types of organizations and the, and the kind of PMO they are they are now. Let's let's consider a situation where it's a new PMO, it's a new yes. PMO. But in terms of project management, the organization is you know is experienced. They they have managed many many you know probably departmental projects and all. Probably probably the PMO the department is new. So if it is a new department, I think it's very important that you know uh, we have the right right knowledgeable people in the department so that they can handle uh, you know the uh, different you know stakeholders within the organizations, right? So it's first thing you know you need to hire a PMO who is experienced who knows how to set up a PMO is important, right? So we used to say you know accidental project manager, right? Now we say accidental PMOs. Yeah, so because probably he was a very good, you know, project manager. And now he just promoted as a PMO. Said top management thinks, oh my God, he's doing very good project manager. Let's bring it, up, bring him in, and you know, let's set up a PMO, and everything will be green from tomorrow. No, it's not going to happen. So selecting the right uh, person uh, for the PMO is very, very important. It's for the top management responsibility to get the right people on the board. Number two is that it's a one person, two person, three person doesn't matter. Let's follow this process. Follow this process means sit with top management, understand their pain, list down what are the what are the purposes they have and what are the things they want to solve solve in next couple of years. Yeah, not in 10 years, next couple of years, right? So then categorize this, small, you know, you know, steps, then set up your, you know, uh, roadmap. Then uh, according to your roadmap, onboard resources based on the, you know, the demand and the target you're setting, you know, probably for initially one or two months, probably one or two resources, senior resources, would be more than enough for you to actually do to set up the policy procedure and governance, right? And and also for the capacity building is also fine. A couple of resources is fine. Then gradually, when you're starting, you know, increasing your functions, like now you also uh, supporting like twenty projects. Uh, you know, you are also actually you know managing one or two projects directly. Um, uh, then you need to bring more resources, right? So I think this is this is a step by step process uh, we should follow. So um, and then then basically it follows the other way, like you know the foundation, then execution. We need to do the regular ROI uh, of the of the projects they are do, doing. Uh, we need to really check the performance of the team, how they are doing, right? So and also top management, education, awareness, and support continuous basis. So I think it's, it's at, at the end of the day, it, it boils down to the first, we need the roadmap. And and uh, with the roadmap, we need to really see where do we stand, the assessment, maturity assessment. And accordingly, we have to set up the roadmap. Then according to the roadmap, 
each you know uh, each milestone of the roadmap is like a project so we need to set like three months i want to get it done six months i need to get it done right and and do a easy assessment after a year where do we stand if you yeah. see that no we are not making much progress then take time it's not no it's no hurry that in the second year we have to go and you know make a big shot no reassessment do the lessons learned reflect right with the team with the management where do we stand then move forward gradually so it takes time to get a pmo get matured right number two is that very important that your pmo if you want to bring some real value make sure your pmo is digital mm. what do you mean by that your target should be uh, a paperless pmo and for this you probably need a you know probably good pmo softwares and uh, systems where basically everyone is putting the, you know inputs in a, in a, some kind of software and you really can see wherever you are you really can see what what was my target today what is my output today at the end of the month you really need to see as a top management my 20 projects what is my rag report for my 20 projects if you can deliver this rag report i mean i mean which project is in red green and amber then basically top management is happy top management what is the expectation of top management they want to see uh, the real time status of the project and they want to see progress right so uh, uh, I think it, it goes in parallel. So you know, set up the PMO and also in your PMO roadmap, put one of the you know the KPI is that you will also make your PMO digital. Probably you will procure a software and you will install this and you will you will actually you know uh, implement this. Probably it takes some time, but yeah. it's very, very important. Yeah, I know. I think that's pretty great, and I love always explaining this. Just like any project, as you said, think about a setup of the project management center of excellence, just like a project. You're going to think about what do you need to do? You need to gather your requirements first because, you know, when a, a project needs to be kicked off, you need to know what is needed. What is that? What are the business needs? What are the pain points? It's almost like a planning phase, right? You have a, a phase where you define the objectives. You outline the purpose of the, of, the, of the PMO. And this is all based on the information you're going to be gathering from the organization. These are going to be like what you think they need. It's about what exactly do they truly need based on the data that you can find. You do interviews, you, you identify your stakeholders, and then you can establish something. You go in with that information and do like an assessment. You can assess and say, where exactly are things at at the moment? Then you take that information and go to the next, which is like a design phase. You Then you design that roadmap. And then from that information, you go off and you develop something that's tangible. You say, yes, based on that, we're going to be able to create something and then you can implement. But again, I love the fact that you also mentioned about being agile. So you're not going to say because we had a structure, we said we're going to be made a supported PMO and now they want more, so we can't do that. You have to be flexible, get feedback, continuously going back to say, what is changing? How is the market changing as well? How can we even pivot? Or maybe maybe that we need to become like a, like a change agent or become like a training group where we start educating more on the project management discipline as well. What would you then say, I like the number one, she's the number one challenge that PMOs or project managers will actually face when setting up a PMO and how can they overcome that challenge? Uh, this is, you already said like, you know, you know, uh, top management want to see some some benefits from the PMO. Yeah. So as long as we can give, you know, some kind of benefits, you know, visible and invisible benefits, they should be happy. So as, whenever they see that they are not getting the values or, you know, the benefits from the PMO, they stop sponsoring. Yeah. And and also we have seen, you know, in, in, our, in, our, in our framework, we said that it's very important in the PMO that you have a succession plan. Very, very important. We have seen many, many PMOs failing because probably the head of PMO left and the PMO got stopped. Yeah. So the succession plan is very, very important. So for top management, I think, you know, uh, have regular discussions, have regular lean, lean coffee meetings or, you know, you know, have, you know, uh, informal meetings with the top management because PMOs works very closely with the top management. Yeah. Very, very closely with the top management, right? And eventually top management, you know, why they do, they need to interact with different departments. You know, if they have a good PMO, they would directly just, you know, interact with one department and they can manage one. But with this transition is not easy. It is a difficult transition because it requires performance, building trust and all. So it's, it's more on collaborative approach. It's very, very important that the PMO are matured enough and they know how to collaborate with the top management and take all these different um you know you know feedbacks inputs judgmental comments right and and have the patience and move forward and they deliver some kind of value in every quarter or you know with short shortest period of time so that everybody's happy they see some progress is happening yeah 
Definitely. I think it's a perfect, it's a perfect segue to project lifestyle. On this segment, we talk about how we can leverage project management with a strategic focus in our on today's topic, we've been talking about the project management office, which is more like a governance, kind of like a safe haven that helps protect the project managers and the project management discipline to ensure that they achieve their goals and objectives. When I reflect about that and I think about what kind of coverage or covering do we have as leaders in our personal life? Setting up a, co- a form of governance involves a form of framework, right? You think about how can I achieve my goals? The PMO is trying to help organizations achieve their goals, but in your life as well, what are those goals that you're trying to achieve? And how do you create that cover to ensure that you are actually on track to achieve them? And I want you to think about the word cover. So I have an acronym that I created. C is for clarification of your values and goals. It starts with that. Begin by understanding what exactly do I really want to achieve? Okay. What exactly do I really want to achieve? And then how do those things align with my values? How do you do that? You ensure that you identify the things that are, you know, dear to your heart and people have got a goal to say, I want to become maybe the vice president of engineering. You want to become the VP of project management, or you want to become even the CEO. That's fine. You have to clarify what those things are and then ensure that you do the C, you organize your priority. You organize and say, with all of these goals, what exactly is actually top in mind? What exactly is the one that's most important to me? How clear am I with the ob- objectives that I want to get to? Then the V's, I love um, Mr. Abdullah, he spoke about roadmap. You need to visualize your plan. Draw it out, map it out in the next three months, in the next six months, in the next one year. Where do I want to be? As project managers, right, you need to have like milestones and say, with this, what exactly is it that I need to then do to get me there within my plan? So visualize it. So put it on paper, stick it on your wall. And my wall right now, I've got um, sticky notes that has like a plan as to where, what I want to do and how I want to get there. Then the E on the cover is establish daily routines. What are those things that I'm going to do? Again, think about a PMO. We talked about the roadmap, getting a team. And what do you need to do on a daily basis to get you there? on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, but what routines do you need to set? How consistent, how do you show up? Is it going back to like take on training or reading a book? I was talking to a consultant just yesterday. He said, I set aside 25 minutes every day to read something. 25 minutes is not about being the best. It's about putting together those consistent habits that can help you transform. Then R is about reflection. Reflect and review regularly. That's what PMs are meant to do, right? We're meant to do lessons learned. Go back and check. So think about cover. How do you cover to ensure that you have something tangible, a framework to ensure that you achieve your goals, not just at work, but also at home. Remember, clarify your values and goals, organize your priorities, visualize your plans, establish your daily routines, and reflect and review regularly. Mr. Abdullah, what do you think about this? And how can we even apply this and elevate in the PMO? So now we've gone through the framework around setting up the vision, you know, understanding what the pain points are, the needs of the business. We've spoken about creating a roadmap and going back to check. And I love the fact that you spoke about quick wins. What are those things that are tangible that the organization can start to see immediately and the changes? Overall, how can we sum that up and have that key takeaway and say, what exactly do we need to do next? Like today, when we step out and say, I have a PMO, I've been thinking about this. What can we start doing today to elevate? Uh, uh, from, from, a, from an individual point of view, I would say that, you know, uh, I think as a, uh, if you're a project management, uh, you, are, you are into a project management profession, I think you can consider PMO uh, as your next, to become a PMO as your next career progress and step. Yeah, uh, just just things in 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 a, in a normal uh, you know uh, equation. Just think that if there are, I said I mean, already, uh, two point five million certified professionals, and and this is only considered probably you know, the two to three percent of the whole project management community, and just consider that you know average PMO has like 10, 15 uh, team members in 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 their PMO. So see the number of PMOs. Uh, will be required and currently in demand in the world market, right? So get educated, learn how to uh, you know set up a PMO, 
learn how to manage stock management, the stakeholders, right? How to make quick wins and uh, develop your career uh, accordingly, right? And from an organization point of view, I think we need to create this, you know, uh, culture of collaboration. And, uh, you know, um, and we need to really understand it's not just a wish that we set up a PMO and it fails uh, because uh, probably other priority comes in and all. So it's yeah. very important that, you know, uh, you know, that we set up a PMO, we put the right people on the place and, um, and we sponsor it for a certain time, at least certain, until they become sustainable. It's very important i'm saying that the you know the pmo becomes sustainable that means once your pmo is like you know in a profit center you make it a profit center that means you're delivering value company understand that it's very important that i have the pmo because they're delivering value they're bringing the project on time i'm getting the reports on time right so uh, until that time top management needs to have a mindset that you know you really need to sponsor and support your pmo so that actually you know uh, you know they can see the lights uh, in, in soon soon uh, sooner or later yeah for that. that's right i think it's again it always boils down to value value is a key driver that ensures that anything can definitely outlive us you know you want to go in an organization and say i set something up and it still does exist as well so right now It's time for questions. So now we're going to be taking questions right from the audience. We've got a couple of questions at a times just to let the viewers know that some of the pieces don't come through from LinkedIn, but we're going to be getting through to them. But keep bringing your questions in and get your questions answered live on the Strategic Project Leader podcast. And if you haven't actually liked to put a, a heart, let us know that you're definitely enjoying this. Let us see your hearts, put a heart in the comments, put something there and say, yes, you can connect. There's something that you've actually learned and leveraged so far. So I've got a question here that I want to just take. The question is from Mary, I believe. She said there are different levels of project management offices and different authority levels. How do you choose? Do you want to do like a supportive, a directive or controlling? So how do you kind of decide on which one is best for the organization? Uh, a very good question. It's a very common question uh, because we need to know where to start, how to start. Yeah. So first thing we should do is, you know, sit with our top management, list down uh, their pain points and the problems they want to solve through the PMO, right? And it's, it's definitely, it's not like, you know, I'm a project manager and uh, I'm going and telling to, to my top management that we should set up a PMO. It's not like that. It's the other way around. Top management must know that they need a PMO. They need a you know office where they can you know manage uh, you know and improve their project performance, right? So it's a both both you know top management need you need to sit with them, you need to understand their pains, what the problems they want to solve. Then you need to yeah. check your capacity. You know what is your current state. So if your current state is there is no PMO, this is one situation. Let's say there is a, there is a PMO. There is one or two person is there. Then we have another situation, right? So I think, you know, depending if there is no PMO, if you're in, into this, you know, maturity level one, it's better to start with a supportive PMO, right? So it's, it's more like, you know, a supportive PMO, there's a purpose. Supportive PMO doesn't mean that we don't do anything. Supportive PMO has a lot of stuff. Uh, the important thing is supportive PMO, you do this, you know, policy procedure uh, and governance setup, right? You help people learn uh, PMO and project management. This is very important. And number three is that you go to people uh, and and you help the uh, you know other project managers saying that you know how can I help you what templates you need what uh, what what estimation techniques you need right I can help you I can help you review your documents and, and all this stuff these are supportive so in supportive PMO the the beauty of supportive PMO is uh, you know your organizations or other project managers or other departments they don't see you as a police organization right because many of the cases. Uh, once you have a PMO uh, in place, all the department is scared. Oh my God! From tomorrow, I will have to ensure everything is in place. Yes. Report on time, right? There is a boss is sitting there who is looking after me every time. Yeah. So there, there, there is a you know, uh, you know, psychological barrier is there. So be a supportive PMO or just be their friend. Establish the communication channels. Um, you know, establish the common language within the organizations. Make people aware how you can help. Once you win the heart then gradually move to the next layer and next layer again depends on uh you know the top management vision and the roadmap that we have and where do we stand right? because we need to do the lessons learned and see the progress we are making thank you good question yeah i think i really like that because when you think about the the supportive piece of it even when you're strategic doesn't mean that you're not going to help them with the support 
a lot of the times I have seen where you come in, they're like, goodness, now we have to create five more reports, right? We have another project management office is going to be more demanding. The project management office space should be a place where you are there to make their lives easier. Yeah. PMs should be able to come and say, right, you know, I have a challenge with my estimating, or maybe I have a challenge with a difficult stakeholder. I'm not able to identify this. You have a team that can go in and train that can go in and support. You have a team of people who can be there to hold the hands even of the organization because you don't want to create another silo. You don't want to become another police team that's bringing extra work. You should take work off the plate of our project professionals and even the rest of the organization as well. I've got another question. Okay. The question is, in a realm where a uh, PMO is already at the verge of going into extinction, how can you revive a failing PMO? Um, come again, the question is? So how do you revive a failing PMO where the organization sees it as not really adding value and they're about to be like disbanded? What can you do quickly to bring them back on track? Again, I think it's, it, I like that. Uh, and this is a very, you know, uh, very tough question also, right? Because uh, we really did need to know uh, through lessons learned why did it fail? Was there an issue with the with the uh, with the culture? Uh, you know, was there an issue with the practice process? It was process in place. What did go wrong? Right? It is very very important we know. Uh, I think if we know the problems, then we can you know plan uh, plan according with it. What, what should we really start a new PMO? Because many of the organizations we have seen that PMO fail and it's not easy to restart the PMO. Right. So probably we need some new bloods uh, within the system who can come up with a lot of visions and energy um, and, 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 and inspire everyone that no, it's not like not going to be like this before. Right. So, so you know, let's try something new. And yes, um, very importantly, uh, you know, start small. Start small. If you're starting a new PMO with the top management's, you know, um, you know uh, priority, start small with an authority. And uh, start, you know, supporting people. Once you win hard, give quick wins to the top management, then gradually grow, right? I'm sure that, you know, there must be some reason why why that organization is failing or failed in the, in the last PMO. I love the fact that you've said that because going back to do some self-reflection, yeah. to really understand what really went well, what went bad, and what could we have done differently? Yeah. Getting this feedback, not even just from the team, but going to speak to the business. And this should be done regularly, you know, throughout the, the time that a PM actually exists, even within your role is to get feedback. You know, we talk about a 360 degree feedback. Yeah. This is not just about trying to get a raise or a promotion, but getting a pause as to where exactly are we, you know, in the overall scheme of things, listening and getting feedback taking that information back to then reassess and get your team and say, what is it really working? Going for coffees, again, understanding that it is important to hear the pain points and then address that rather than, you know, thinking about the, everything is perfect because we have the fancy reports, you know, everything seems to be great. People are smiling, but at the coolers, people are complaining, right? So you want to become that unique value add that drives strategy, provides value, and make things happen. We've got another question. Oh now, <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> this is good. We're talking about generative AI now. Yeah, yeah. So, so what are your thoughts before setting a brand new PMO? And how do you think we can actually, what do you think about existing maturity of PMOs in comparison with emerging technology? So I think it's around how do we leverage probably generative AI today in the setup of project management office? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, sure. Uh, you know, it again depends, you know, where do you stand in a PMO, right? So I think, you know, uh, AI, AI can help on top of your existing good practices. Yeah, so first we need the fundamentals. I mean, we need to set up a PMO, we need to know, you know, to bring people into a, some kind of system some kind of project management system that people are giving inputs to your system so that you really know that what is what you know your your, your plan versus you know output you know your you know uh, what are the gaps and what are the disk uh, you know what, what are the issues that you have that needs to be digitalized first yeah then comes to ai because you know our company uh, we are one of the pioneers in developing ai system for pmo 
So I have another another session called how AI drives PM, which is another one hour session, and and it make and and it's 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 the one that you know really how AI can really help you better drive your PM. It's not like you know uh, the head of PM is 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 an AI. No, it's not going to work like this. Uh, uh, or you cannot expect that you know your your AI is going to you know solve all of your problems. No, it's not going to work like this. So how PMI you know um, how 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 AI can actually help is uh, in different way. I can give you some real examples how AI can help uh, in the PMO space. Simple thing. Um, let's say uh, one of the fundamental things um, uh, in, in in project management we do is do we do lessons learned. Uh, for example, we have a, we have, we have developed a system where uh, the AI in the back end we call call her Ellie because Ellie can interact with you. She can talk with you. Yeah. So if you ask Ellie, can you create a you know WBS for me? She she does it. Yeah. So we we are trying to make her more smarter day by day. So what one thing she is doing is she is once you are putting uh, giving inputs into the system like you know what are the mistakes you have done on a particular task or in a particular project, she's learning it. So next time. When you are actually, you know, uh, creating a WBS, uh, you know, this is something coming up very soon. Uh, when next time you're creating a WBS, AI will come and tell you that, uh, okay, last time you made a mistake in this particular task and that, that has failed. Do you want to repeat it again, right? So again, you know, uh, you, can, you can ask AI to actually create your portfolio reports and all this stuff, she can do it, right? And one of the things that, you know, we are releasing, you know, probably, you know, uh, next two weeks is that, uh, referring the right resource for the right task mm. within think of this yeah so when you're creating a wbs um uh, your uh, and when when we're creating you know a task ai can suggest you, you know, which is who is the right person uh, for this particular task and that can help you uh, you know um, uh, save a lot of time and she will come up with all the uh, you know the statistics of the track records and everything and you can choose the right person to actually apply for the PMO, right? So, so there are different way AI actually uh, will save your time. But at the end of the day, PM is not just about data or information. It's yeah. it's it's requires a lot of collaboration, a uh, lot of understanding, uh, uh, you know, solving a lot of pains of the stakeholders, and that requires some human skills. Yeah. So exactly, uh, I know, and that's and that's the, the number one thing here, because we need to just leverage. Um, artificial intelligence and technology generally to help improve the work that we do. But I don't think that's ever going to replace the human interaction. I'm going to have a conversation with your stakeholders as to, you know, what is going on in your project, right? What are those requirements? What do we need to change? But I think the intelligent and strategic project leader is one who's going to leverage those tools and say, how can I be more efficient? So when you create a plan, you can put it into the system and say, did I actually miss anything? Like, is are there any like loopholes or is there any better resource based on what you've already seen that could help become the solution to that actual problem? So, when it comes to tools, I know you spoke about the actual one that your organization has actually created. Is that accessible for other organizations to actually tap into the yeah. AI tool? Yeah, yeah. so it's, it's a SaaS based product, so uh, anyone can go and sign up, right? Um, and it's a very integrated kind of system. It's not just like a task, task management. It's very integrated. Like you can do your change management integrated way. You can create your, you know, uh, change control board. They can review things and stuff. Uh, it has the forecasting uh, mechanism as well. So sometimes we get requests from the client that, can you please stop the forecasting module, please? I said, uh, yeah, we can <laughs> because, uh, you know, when when AI started, you know, making all this forecasting that you know your project is going to fail in next six months, based on the you know the, the data. You know, data we have, a lot of people get scared, right? <laughs> so, yeah. I know they're giving us so much to think about, for sure. I think it's a good one. I love this question. How could PMO leaders get a seat at a table? Remember, our goal is to help chat a path from you know, the PM part right to C-suite. We want to be able to ensure that this becomes a strategic function that is sustainable. So how can PMO leaders get a seat at the table? Yes, again, uh, you know, ends up with the top management. The top management, right? So I think it's a journey, right? So um, I think uh, the PMO leaders, 
uh, why we are team leaders. We are there to actually serve the purpose of the company. Yeah, so as long as uh, the top management ensured that uh, the, the C-suite that we have, they're aligned with the organization's objectives uh, and the missions and the visions. I think uh, for their own, own good, they need to actually, you know, sit together, collaborate with the, themselves. And also it requires a lot of top management, you know, strong sponsorship and guidance. Sometimes, you know, uh, whenever they, you are setting up a PMO, a lot of people will not like it. Yeah. So yeah. different departments will say different things. Uh, I think it's, it's common for any transformation, uh, transformation project, because, you know, the, the, the head of the transformation head always is the, they, they seem like they're the raw, bad person in the organization. So we're trying to change everything, right? So PMO is like this, right? But uh, this situation can be overcome in many ways. One is collaboration. Another one is actually top management needs to be something strict that no, we are going to do it at any cost. We are going to do it. Once you send this message from the top, we are going to set it up. We are going to bring everything uh, in the system. We are going to actually, you know, uh, establish processes uh, and, and, and transparency. Uh, though a lot of people within the organization may not like it, but I think in the long run, it will be uh, the system within the organization. So, so it's, a, it's a, again, top management, policy, governance, uh, and, and, and the structure is required. Yeah. yeah, I know it's, it's, it's always easier when you have senior leadership support driving mm-hmm. change to say, we need a function that's going to help us ensure that we achieve our goals and objectives. Mm-hmm. And the PMO is going to be that driving force and then they get the blessing on there. But the, the, another segue there is we could have that message and then we could have a PMO that's maybe just a supportive function that probably has different layers and reports right at the very, very, you know, the totem pole is really, really, But the question there is how can that PMO function be strengthened to have it a seat at the table to write a C-suite? Are they like key things that you've seen over the years that PMO leaders need to embody so they could pretty much go right up to the very top in senior organization. So there are some success stories. So start small. Uh, you don't have, you don't really don't need an enterprise PMO in day one, probably. Yeah. So, so start with a small PMO, supportive PMO, you know, uh, make some wins, celebrate, let other, you know, PMO leaders in the departments know that something good is happening, you know, within this department, right? So uh, and then 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 grow it from there, right? So uh, it's important that the, the quick wins that the PMO is making, they are sharing this news, celebrating it, and other people are feeling, oh my God, they're doing well. Let's let's bring them in, and probably you know you know seek help from them, right? So you'll see that you know other departments coming to PMO. Can you please help me with the project? Can you help me with the estimation? Can you help me with the managing the you know the better resources, right? So it's important to establish this trust that if there is a PMO, they are doing good and and we can actually go them and get the right right support. Yeah, I love that because um, at the end of the day, they said people may not even realize that they have problems, right? So you have to become that agent that brings change and brings value. And one piece that has helped me as well through my career is the fact that before I set up a project management office, I make sure that I go and have meetings and different stakeholders, even within operations, within IT, depending on what the what SPM is actually going to you know, function and support, just hear from them. Become an ally rather than you being seen as a new function that's going to bring more stress and more pain. Sit down and once you understand that, and I love the fact that once you take that and create a solution, make sure that they are part of that change and help them validate your success. Create people who are going to become the ones that, you know, going to keep, you know, spreading the message and the vision to say, we have a team who has probably helped us simplify our reporting process. We have a team who has helped us connect our financials to see, you know, how it benefits us in the longer run. And they are now going to become champions for the project environment office. But without that, I love the fact that um, Hamid just said that you need to also educate the C-suite because they need to start seeing the value that project management actually brings to the organization. It's going to take time, but everything starts with us, right? We are the ones that need to create the change. And I love it so much. So we are all aligned. We've got time for just one more question. How exactly have you found influencing without authority? That is a major challenge that a lot of PMOs and PMs face. So what skills have you leveraged through your career to help you influence senior leadership to get the results that you actually want? 
Authority is something not just, you know, you just, somebody has given you the authority, you need to earn it, right? So, uh, so uh, you know, I think that goes through some step-by-step -step process, right? So, uh, though many times we have seen you have authority, but you cannot execute it because the board, people, they don't, don't, don't just, you know, listen to you because um, they're not supporting you. So then how do you do? I think it's, it's better not to um, apply the authority, rather be collaborative win the hearts through the system through the process and um, and 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 in you know uh, put your processes practices gradually not in one shot all right so it goes through some step by step process more collaborative uh, more collaborative approach right what was the second part of the question Hula? You know, the question is, you know, when people want to pretty much just face a challenge of not having authority, right? So how can they really influence? So what influencing skills have you leveraged through your career? And, you know, how can they get that? Um, that's a good question, right? <laughs> so uh, what influence, um, you know, really worked in my career? So basically, you know, uh, as I mentioned, it's, it's not a lot like, you know, uh, is is the passion and the, and and the profession, yeah. So I always say that passion and profession, when they they converge, that really works well. Then you become probably very confident that you can really do this well, right? And uh, that that becomes the influence. That becomes the influence that that really can bring some changes and really can make some difference. I know, Mr. Abdullah, I want to say thank you so much, which is really the top of the hour. I can't even believe that time has gone so quick. Oh, I want to thank you for being here. You know, you spent your evening, you've had a whole day of sessions educating all the leaders as well. So we want to appreciate you. We know, we know we definitely need to bring you back, but I want people to know how can they connect with you? How can they reach out as well to learn more about the, the PMO Global Institute? Yeah, sure. Um, uh, we can share the uh, website link and the LinkedIn uh, pages, right? So I can just write down my uh, uh, LinkedIn page and the website page in the chat box, right? Okay. And, uh, just be there. You can become a member, uh, uh, a free member, actually. You can become a free member of PMO Global Institute. We call it actually um, uh, associate membership. You can download the frameworks. You can uh, download the case studies that we have, the lessons learning. Yeah, um, and yeah, please be connected in the, with me in LinkedIn. Uh, shoot me questions whenever you have. Trust me, I really love uh, the space uh, of PMO. There is a lot to work. And with all of our effort, uh, we really want to make a better world for the PMOs. Yeah, so let's work together. Thank you so much. That's been great. I want to thank each and every one of you for being here. I can see Yasa Ahmed, Florence. Listen. Abdul, Abdul Aziz, Ng, Ahmed, Doris, Miriam, Deepak, from all over the world, you've actually joined us today from Canada. We had Azerbaijan from Saudi Arabia. We had China in the house as well. We had Oregon, Portland. Jeremiah, how are you doing today? We had Florida. Oh, we had New York. I want to say thank you so much. We had Pakistan in the building as well. We had Turkey. Thank you. Without all of you, this wouldn't have been possible. We have Cameroon, Malaysia. The key thing with this is with everything you've heard today, we've spoken about the vision, a roadmap, creating change, being becoming value drivers, becoming the catalyst that adds value. It doesn't matter if you're a project manager, a PMO analyst, a project leader, a financial accountant. Once you position yourself as a unique value add, it sets you apart from everyone else. It creates a sustainable career trajectory that sets you up vertically. I want to say thank you so much. Dave Bezos says that he wants to put a ding, um, a positive um, ding in the universe. I say together, we can make a positive dent in the universe because there is a power in the multiplicity effect. Let me know in the comments one action you're going to be taking and doing differently. Is it a vision? Is it around planning? Is it about your positioning? But just one action you're going to be taking. That way you're going to solidify the knowledge you've actually learned today so that you can create a lasting transformation. Remember, you are your life's project manager. To make your life project count for anything, you need to make it count by taking action daily, being accountable, creating something that's actually going to be sustainable. But I cannot wait to hear more from you, learn from you as well. Let's continue the conversation. If you want to learn more about me, you can go to followalibi.com where I can also answer your questions, connect, subscribe, 
And above all, I cannot wait to share your successes. That's most important. I want to see the changes you've actually made. I want to thank Mr. Abdullah once again for being here. And we know we have to definitely bring you back in the studio. Thank you so much and have yourself a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.